Welcome to section four of Microbiology Fundamentals. In this section, we will be discussing prion diseases. So let's get started. This story takes place under the sea. There are some bad fish in this area. You can see this bad fish breaking into someone's house, using a crowbar to pry open the entryway. Prying sounds like prion, as in prion diseases, which we're discussing with this story. The owner of that home slash rock has just been knocked out by one of the bad fish. Look at that poor guy, knocked out, face down on the ground. Fortunately, the poor victim has a very loyal friend. It's this sponge-like hero right here. He defended his friend by ripping the brain out of the head of this bad fish. You can see that sponge hero standing, holding that brain in his hand. The sponge and brain together represent spongiform encephalopathy. Encephalopathy simply refers to the altered mental status that prion diseases cause. And spongiform simply refers to the appearance of brain tissue on histology, which is often described as looking like a sponge, or spongiform. So sponge hero holding a brain represents spongiform encephalopathy. This is a histological image from a brain biopsy in a patient with prion disease, or spongiform encephalopathy. As you can see, there are these vacuoles scattered throughout. These vacuolations give the appearance of holes, much like the holes of a sponge. Dripping from that brain is leftover cerebral spinal fluid, or CSF. You can see that bluish, translucent, goopy CSF dripping toward the ground. As it puddles on the ground, you can see it has taken the shape of 1433. This refers to the 1433 protein, which is found in the CSF of patients with prion diseases. Now angry that the sponge hero has just killed his villainous comrade, this bad fish is running at the sponge in an attempt to kill him. As you can see, the weapon he is carrying is a pair of scissors. Ready for almost any aggressor, this sponge has squarely knocked out this scissor guy. Now scissors are our recurring symbol for proteases, because proteases cut proteins just like scissors cut paper. And the fact that the sponge resisted the scissor attack represents protease resistance. This means that prions are not going to break down due to proteases. One more reason that prions are super dangerous. Thankfully, our sponge hero is not alone in this fight. See this underwater squirrel? She's also doing her fair share of damage. In fact, she has just knocked out this bad fish using one of those cartoony bricks on the end of a spring. As it stretches toward the bad fish, the spring mechanism stretches out, revealing that helical shape. This represents the alpha helix formation of proteins. As you can see, that punch has sent this bad fish staggering backwards into some sheets that are hanging out to dry. These sheets represent the beta pleated sheet formation of proteins. And that helix punching the fish into the sheets represents how prions can convert alpha helices into beta pleated sheets. This allows prions to mess with and destroy surrounding proteins. Just to reinforce this idea, PRPC indicates normal prions, which are found in normal healthy brains. And these are in the alpha helical configuration. These become problematic when they get converted to the beta pleated sheet formation. These are termed PRPSC. I remember that PRPSC is the abnormal pathologic form by focusing on that S. S for stupid, as in these PRPSC proteins are stupid. Notice that this guy getting knocked back into the sheets has actually knocked over his two buddies in the process, causing them to be wrapped up in sheets as well. This represents the fact that once these prion altered beta sheets are formed, they will convert yet more proteins into this beta sheet configuration, thus perpetuating the damage created by these PRPSC pathologic prions. Now that we've covered the pathogenesis of prion diseases, let's dive into the symptoms. Notice this bad fish over here with one of those sheets wrapped around his foot. He's scurrying away like a coward, trying to catch the first taxi out of the area. This taxi symbolizes ataxia. Prion diseases, or spongiform encephalopathy, causes ataxia, which simply refers to decreased balance and coordination due to neuronal cell damage. So taxi for ataxia. And now let's focus on that demon taxi driver. He's pretty impatient on account of him being a demon and everything. In fact, he's so impatient that he's shouting at the bad fish, telling him to hurry up. Well, demon shout sounds like dementia, one of the clinical outcomes of prion diseases. So demon shout dementia. The most feared and inevitable consequence of prion diseases is death. It will always kill the patient. The PRPSC beta sheet proteins accumulate in the neurons and cause apoptosis, which just eventually kills the brain and kills the patient. To help you remember this, notice that the demon driver has actually run over some innocent crab-like character on his way over here, causing death to the crab. Look at that poor dead crab. The crab's eyes even have those cartoony X's on them. Anyways, this dead crab will help you remember death with prion diseases. Now let's discuss the specific types of prion diseases, or spongiform encephalopathy, starting with mad cow disease. This disease can also be referred to as bovine spongiform encephalopathy. To help you remember this disease, we have this dirt trail leading from the dead crab all the way back to his butcher shop. This is the crab's butcher shop back here, where he butchers the meat of sea cows. These dead cows represent the mad cows, as in mad cow disease. The next prion disease is called fatal familial insomnia, 
To help you remember this name, we have this poor squid-like character who just can't sleep. Let's zoom in to see this better. Look at those droopy eyes. It turns out that this neighborhood is super crazy and always loud, so no one really ever gets sleep, especially this squid guy. In fact, his poor family is suffering as well. Look at them on the bed there. It looks like one of them is dead. So sad. Well, these squids not sleeping represents insomnia. And the fact that there's a family for this idea will help you remember that this is a familial disease. And one dead family member will help you remember that this disease is fatal. So again, these ideas together represent fatal familial insomnia. Another prion disease is Creutzfeldt-Jakob disease, or CJD. To help you remember this, let's look back at the taxi. As you can see, the taxi will need to cross this large field to get away from this crazy neighborhood. In this field, there is a cross, marking the grave of someone who has recently passed away in the neighborhood. It makes sense that there would be a little grave post here near this dangerous neighborhood, where there's likely lots of death. Anyways, the words cross and field together kind of sound like crossfield or Kreutzfeld, as in kreutzfeldt jakob disease. The last type of prion disease is called kuru. This is an act practiced by certain tribes that eat the dead of their fallen family members. Tragically, when a family member dies of a prion disease, their unsuspecting loved ones will eat their brains, not realizing they are keeping that disease alive and cursing themselves to that same sad death. Central to this whole idea is cannibalism. So kuru describes tribal cannibalism. To help you remember cannibalism, we have shown these indigenous snails. Let's zoom up to see this better. As you can see, one snail is dead and one is alive. The living one is eating the carcass of his fallen brother in an obvious display of cannibalism, which again describes Kuru. Another important fact to know is that prions are resistant to autoclaving, a standard sterilization procedure. Autoclaves are machines that exert high pressures and high temperatures to clean off surgical equipment. This is standard procedure for every hospital that performs surgery and is very effective, but it's not very effective against prions. For example, if a brain surgeon performs surgery on a patient with a prion disease, and this isn't known to anyone, those surgical tools will undergo autoclaving to be ready for the next surgical patient. However, the prions will remain on that equipment, intact and ready to infect the next brain used by that tool. To help you remember autoclaving, we have shown an autoclave here in front of the butcher shop. Let's zoom in to see this better. Though the workers here are nothing more than bloody butchers, they like to autoclave their cutlery and other tools to keep the cleanest beef products. They take really good care of their autoclave and don't want hooligans messing around with it. For this reason, they keep a threatening sign near the autoclave that reads, stay away. The sign will repel or resist people coming to the autoclave. So again, the sign and chains around the autoclave will help you remember that prions are autoclave resistant. Now that we've covered the image, let's review with a question. A 65 year old male with dementia passes away. It is reported that he had difficulty walking and experienced frequent falls. His family requests that an autopsy be performed in order to provide a definitive diagnosis. A biopsy of his brain is obtained and shown below. Which of the following describes the proteins responsible for neuronal cell death in this patient's brain? A. PRPC alpha helical B. PRPC beta sheet C. PRPSC alpha helical D. PRPSC beta sheet Hopefully from the question stem, you notice that this patient had dementia and ataxia because he had difficulty walking and experienced frequent falls. Both of these are symptoms of spongiform encephalopathy, another name for prion diseases. And just as a side note, Ataxia and dementia can be caused by many forms of dementia, so these findings are not specific to spongiform encephalopathy. In fact, the reason we even think it's spongiform encephalopathy is because we're given a biopsy which shows those vacuolations, which are left behind from apoptosed neurons. This gives it that spongy appearance, giving the disease its name, spongiform. And with prion diseases in mind, the correct answer is choice D, PRPSC proteins in the beta sheet formation. Remember from the image that the alpha helical prions get converted to the beta-pleated sheet formation, which are pathological. And again, these are termed PRPSC, and the S for stupid. Now choice A is wrong because PRPC describes the normal prion. Also, these are in the alpha helical configuration. So for both of these reasons, answer choice A is incorrect. Choice B is wrong because again, PRPC is the normal prion, although the beta sheet formation is what we'd expect. Lastly, choice C is wrong because the alpha helical formation is not what we'd expect. So again, the correct answer is PRPSC in the beta sheet configuration. And that should be all you need to know about prion diseases.